Hi folks, welcome back. I want to welcome you to video number four in our video series based on my book Exposing the Truth About Praying for the Sick. Now of all the videos that you're going to be watching in this, uh, this entire series, I, I do need to say this about this particular video. This video is probably going to be the single most important video of the entire series. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, in the previous video, um, basically what I did was just an introduction. Um, but now I'm going to just give an overview of what the rest of the videos is going to be all about. And in doing so, I want to do something that's going to make Satan really, really mad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to expose his battle plan. I'm going to expose his wicked plan that he has to confuse and confound the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and all Christians, all true born again Christians. You see, the devil has a plan, folk, and that plan can be seen in his nature. And what does the Bible say um, about his nature? He's a liar, he's a thief, and he's a murderer. He's come to lie, he's come to steal, he's come to, to rob, um, and he's come to destroy. And sometimes I think we as Christians, we become a little bit too comfortable in that, although we know that and we realize that, because we don't actually see it in our daily lives and we don't see it in the church, we tend to get a little bit more comfortable. But that is exactly where the enemy wants us to be, to feel comfortable. And there is no better place to feel comfortable than sitting in church and being taught a doctrine that we believe just because the pastor has been teaching it, just because it is in the constitution of the church, and just because the Bible college that the pastor studied at has endorsed it as a doctrine, um, you know, it makes us feel comfortable and it makes us feel safe. Well, I'm going to say this. I've said it before in the previous video and I'm going to say it again, and I know it's going to probably outrage a number of people, particularly pastors. I don't mean to stand on toes, but I'm going to say this because I need to. If I'm going to expose the devil's plan, if I'm going to expose Satan's plan, I'm going to say this to you um, right now in this video. And that is that Satan has specifically chosen the doctrine of praying for the sick and healing. He's specifically chosen that doctrine to confuse the church. Um, he could have chosen the doctrine of tithing. He could have chosen the doct doctrine of anything else. But he's chosen specifically the doctrine of healing, and there's a very good reason for that. It's because it's linked to something that the church does not realize. No way, I'm about to reveal to you information that you would not have read about anywhere. You would not have been able to Google about it. You would not have been able to... Um, no one's going to preach on this, but I'm going to reveal this to you because this is what God has shown me as I've studied God's word over these last couple of months, last couple of years, and I've begun to see things. And it's simply this. And here is the overview. This is, this is the crux of the whole course. I mean, not the course, the, the whole video series that I'm going to be presenting and what I've written in my, in my book. You see, folk, in my book that I wrote, exposing the truth about praying for the sick and discovering God's true purpose in trials and suffering. The book itself, as is with this video series, is not about trying to prove the church wrong and trying to debate and argue on particular scriptures whether healing is, whether the doctrine of healing is correct or not, or whether it's been exercised correct or not. That is not what the book is about. And that is certainly not what this video series is about. I'm about to reveal to you exactly what this video series is about. You see, there's going to come a time when we all stand before God one day and every one of us have, or we should have, been preached on the sub. Uh, we should have received preaching and teaching on the particular subject called the Great White Throne Judgment. And that is where, that is the judgment where God is going to separate the sheep from the goats. And that is the judgment seat where every one of us are going to stand before God and where God is, we are going to hear actually Christ himself either say to 
people welcome into the kingdom of heaven good and faithful servant always going to say depart from me you worker workers of iniquity because i never knew you now that's the great white throne judgment that is where the sea will give up all its dead and everybody that's ever lived will stand before god that is the great white throne judgment but i don't want you to be confused with that judgment and another judgment and the bible calls it the judgment seat of christ now the judgment seat of christ folk is something that should excite you but to most christians the majority of christians the moment you mention the judgment seat of christ 99% of christians don't understand it correctly and they think it's going to be the judgment for christians where we will give an account of our lives and we will um, whether good or bad we will give an account of our lives to god because it's only for the church that judgment seat of christ is reserved only for the church the body of christ but here's the thing about the judgment seat of christ it is a judgment of rewards not punishment and that is the very reason that paul the apostle when he wrote about the judgment seat of christ he, he used a very specific word um, a, a greek word called bema spelled b-e-m-a so it's the bema seat of christ and the bema seat of christ is a seat of reward and it's not the seat of judgment let me explain something archaeologists have dug up these 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 um, artifacts and these these the concrete or, or rock um, seats called bema seats from the old times and uh, during paul's day and paul was describing this and he uses athletics as an example he says when 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 one person runs a race well there's only going to be one winner now that winner who who ran the race and won the race received the prize and he would stand before the judge and the judge would be seated at the bema seat so the winner of that race stands before the bema seat and receives a prize and generally in those days the prize was a wreath um, that they put around the neck of the winner now I'm not sure if they then had second or third place. I don't think so, because Paul only speaks about one person winning the race. But it was not a place of punishment. It just meant they lost out on the prize. And that is what Paul is saying. He's saying to the church, there's going to come a time, folk, that we are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we're either going to be receiving a prize or we're going to be losing out. And it is yet during our lifetimes here on earth that we are busy running that race. We are busy running that race right now. And however we run now is going to determine the prize when we stand before Christ at the judgment seat of Christ or the beamer seat of Christ or the seat of reward. Now, this is where I get to reveal Satan's evil plan. He's a robber, he's a thief, he's a liar, and he's, he is a destroyer. And if there's one thing he wants to do, he wants to rob the believer. He wants to rob the Christian believer of that particular prize. And the way he's doing that is by, by confusing the church, by bringing in satanic, demonic, and devilish doctrines, as I quoted earlier in the previous, um, previous video, where the Bible says in the last days, that these seducing spirits are going to come and they're going to teach doctrines of devils. And I believe and I am convinced 100% in my heart that one of these doctrines of devils, folk, and please don't be offended, hear me out, watch the end of the video series, and then if you really think I'm wrong, please write to me. As I've said, I'm going to make my, my, my email available. Write to me and tell me I'm wrong. But I need you to hear me out. One of the doctrines of, of, of devils that I believe that, that Satan has brought into the church is this particular doctrine of praying for the sick. Where we today think that we are called to actually lay hands on the sick, to anoint people with oil, and they shall be healed. 
what boggles my mind, what boggles my brain, and has for many, many, many years, as I fellowshiped in, in both um, Pentecostal churches and charismatic churches, even Reformed churches that practice this particular doctrine, what has boggled my mind and has, has absolutely just really blown me away is that I've seen firsthand how that pastors have actually called people to the front. Elders have called people to the front and have said, is anybody sick among you? And then the people come to the front and they are a, they are then anointed with oil and um, uh, the hands are laid on them and they are prayed for. And, and uh, the sickness is commanded in Jesus' name to leave. And it doesn't. Um, despite the person proclaiming afterwards, yes, I'm healed, and then comes in lim limping the next day or the next week into church, or the person dies from cancer. Folks, we've been fooling ourselves. We have been fooled by Satan for so many years. It's time to face the truth. It's time to tackle this thing head on. It's, it's, it's time to reveal and expose Satan's plan of confusion. Now, now there are many people, many millions of Christians around the world that may have this particular question in their hearts that has resulted in confusion in their, in, their, in their minds and in their hearts. That they know that their pastors have taught it, their churches have taught it, they've been practicing it for many years. For many years people have come to the front, they've been prayed for, and hardly anyone, really if they're honest, anyone gets healed. 